down, that's great. Andrew decided not to come up and get everybody in. It's my job. So if you're still standing, quick, sit down. Thank you very much. All right. So thank you, Andrew, for putting us right after lunch. It's the perfect slot to talk about the most boring subject on revenue management. So if you want to tune out right now, this is the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Mims. Okay, so um, what we're going to try and talk a little bit about revenue management and integrating it into the organization, what does that really mean? Fortunately, you don't have to hear me tell you what it means. You've got three brilliant people that are going to come and do the talking, so this is perfect for me. Um, I'm going to invite them right up. Um, Jeanette Ho from uh, Fairmont Raffles Hotels. Um, Long, long career in revenue management distribution, worked with the airline business as well, so um, we're very lucky and thankful for having Jeanette uh, up here with us. Thank you. Uh, ben George from Hilton. Um, you don't see him around very often. He's constantly traveling the globe, so we were lucky to get him. I actually conned him into this. You know, I said, hey, Ben, I haven't heard from you, and I'd really like to talk to you about something very important. Are you free? And he says, yeah, 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 sure, wait, what's up? And I said, okay, I want you on this panel. And he's like, oh, shit, I don't want to get myself into. So, Ben, thank you, and sorry for doing that to you. And uh, Jürgen Ortelli from Pan Pacific. Thank you, Jürgen, for joining us as well. Someone I can always count on, so thank you so much. All right, so um, I think we're just going to try and um, get them settled in. Uh, mics all here. I'm going to get you some mics. All right, and um, by the way, I work at Marina Bay Sands, so I was by default the moderator for this, uh, for this uh, panel. Um, someone told me, so now you're out of revenue management. I used to be revenue management, now to uh, do a marketing role. Someone said, you're out of revenue management, how'd you manage that? And I said, well, I'm never out of revenue management. I don't think any one of us really are out of revenue management. So I think we'll sit and talk about how that revenue management function um, transcends all of, the, all of the areas that we all work with uh, within our businesses or really how we should try and integrate it. So, you know, thinking about revenue management uh, years ago, we saw Bob talk, take us through the sales, uh, sales professional uh, over the years. Um, at some point, it started out as being um, in charge of reservations. You know, no one really knew what revenue management was. And he said, oh, you know what? It's to do with room booking, so I guess you should be in reservations. At that time, reservations was really under front office. You remember those dark old days, right? Yep. Believe me, I am that old. Um, it was under front office. And then suddenly start, people started seeing the value in, in a revenue management function, um, and they decided to <clears throat> put it under sales, for God knows why. Um, they put it under sales and marketing. And then uh, suddenly the GM said, hey, this is actually quite valuable to me. And I'm going to try and pull it out of sales and marketing, not to mention the conflict between sales and revenue management, and probably the reason why they pulled it out, ultimately. But most places now have a revenue manager um, reporting to general managers. But the problem is, I still think no one really understands, or not everybody really understands, what this revenue management guy is doing. This person's probably just sitting behind a computer crunching numbers, that's what everybody thinks, and then he's just picking a room price. That's it. So I'm going to ask the, uh, our three panelists to just talk a little bit about that. And maybe we can start, uh, Ben, on um, how do you think that role has evolved over the years and whether or not people truly do understand what a revenue manager does? I, I still think um, the vast majority of people don't truly understand what it is revenue management does. Uh, but actually, I think the responsibility for that lies with revenue management, not with the other, not the other way around. Uh, many of you were type of talking about it, but uh, still far too often when we walk into a hotel and we talk to a revenue manager, actually what we see is somebody who is sat behind a computer crunching numbers. Um, and it's incumbent on the revenue management fraternity to be able to speak in a language that the rest of the world understands. And most revenue managers I've found don't. 
i.e. they're very comfortable speaking in and around numbers or speaking something in Excel, but actually ask them to speak in a language that the majority of the world understands and they struggle. Um, Hilton made a decision about 12, 13, 14 years ago that we didn't want to uh, put the revenue manager under the general manager for that very reason. Because um, most, uh, we, we talked about it before lunch, and most of the general managers around the world came from operations or an F&B background. Um, so actually what Hilton created um, about 14 years ago was this role called Director of Business Development. Uh, and that was someone who sat, sat between the general manager and the revenue manager. And that person had responsibility for sales, marketing, revenue management, e-commerce, and PR. So they, they were the person who could moderate, for want of a better word, between the conflict. Uh, between sales and revenue management. Uh, in terms of how the roles of, role has evolved, certainly from my perspective, the, the role has probably evolved more in the last five years than it, it has in, 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 any time previously, insofar as I think the revenue managers previously were very much responsible for making sure the systems are set up properly, making sure the right checks were in the right boxes or the right rates were open at the right time, did we have the right length of stay control on, um, and that, that type of thing, that's where it was. And that really wasn't, in my opinion, providing that much real value to the organization. The value to the organization now is actually how the revenue manager provides a service to sales, to marketing, to the general management around you know, what the opportunities are coming up or what the risks potentially are in the future. Uh, to, and then tell them what they're seeing is happening around the world in terms of demographics, around travel, around what the customers are doing, so we can forearm um, sales and marketing or e-commerce to deploy strategies or activity to try to fix that problem in advance. You know, I'm, I'm going to pick up on what, what you said very early on in that statement. You said the fault is really the revenue manager's fault. And maybe I'll ask you, Jurgen, do you really think that it's the revenue manager's fault, or is it maybe the hotel... GM who's at fault and not trying to sell to all his team members the value and importance of what the revenue manager does? Um, good question, who's at fault? It's like a finger, finger pointing thing, but... <laughs> <laughs> Go right I, ahead. I, 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 don't, I don't think it's, a, it's a his fault, her fault, or whoever's fault. I think it's just the way it's evolved in the past. In, in the very beginning, there was even from the revenue manager side and the general manager side, and probably from whether it's a, a DBD or a director of sales, marketing director of sales, whatever it was, there was very little understanding of what <laughs> revenue management really was. If I, if I think back at my first revenue management conversation that I can remember now was with, with our director of sales and marketing in the hotel, and he was saying, oh, we somehow need to reduce those tour series because it's getting very busy and I think the rate's too low. So that was the first ever revenue management discussion. So it's, it's more about, well, what is, it, what, is it, what is it and how does it work? Don't really know. Um, I think over the years, everyone's gotten a little smarter and better educated on revenue management. There's been a lot of talk about it, obviously. Uh, and the talk just helps then to put it into a better, not a better light is the wrong word again, uh, but put it into a better place and a better position within the hotel. And then people became more educated. Revenue managers as well as, as the general managers had to become more educated. In the beginning, the revenue managers, they were really reservations managers that were used to working with spreadsheets in my mind. Mm. And from there, it involved more into all the other bits and pieces that we do today. I mean, if you look at the distribution side of things that we have to cover today, is a lot more than it ever was before. Oh, we had a phone and a telex machine. <laughs> that was about it. So I think that's where it's kind of developed. So uh, I don't think anyone is really at fault. I think really it's, it's, it's over the years, it's developed further and just gotten a, yeah, probably yeah. better level. For me, one of, one of the things that we recognize is that perhaps as an industry, we've looked at revenue management as being the role and the responsibility of one individual in every one hotel. Right? We provide so many capabilities and all that, and we say, well, there is this director of revenue management, and this individual uh, needs to be able to explain everything else and interact with sales and interact with marketing and all that. So for us, we've kind of uh, evolved the thinking around revenue management as an individual role into really revenue management needs to be practiced as a whole culture across a hotel or an enterprise. So about two years back, we embarked on the fact that, you know, we wanted to move really from rooms revenue management into this total hotel uh, profit optimization. 
So we've come up with different programs to say, okay, now let's involve your restaurant managers in restaurant revenue management. So for the first time, you kind of brought the director of revenue management and the F&B uh, outlet managers and the director of F&B together. So there was this expanded understanding of uh, revenue management into the F&B. So we've done the same with sort of function space. We're about to do that into the spa area. So the spa director suddenly comes in. So what we found is that it became necessary to create some sort of a platform uh, whereby your, maybe you call it a weekly meeting or whatever it is, but it does need to be that revenue management is the responsibility of the core team. So we kind of put together a little program that talks about what is, what is the role of, I mean, revenue management being the responsibility of a core team and who should this core team be, what are their roles, how do they come together to discuss uh, revenue opportunities. And it used, and I think the word revenue management is a little bit of, uh, it's mm -hmm. no longer quite that applicable because prior to this, every dollar of room revenue was kind of worth the same in, in profitability. You know, it, was, it had pretty fixed, uh, fixed costs and it had pretty fixed variable costs as well. But now, as you know, if you bring in other revenue streams with different profitability area, as the distribution costs become so different according to the different channels, it can be anything from $5 to 30% of your rate. So things like profit optimization and that thought uh, comes into it. So with that, I think the, the, uh, the idea of revenue management needs to kind of evolve to how does an entire core team at a hotel actually tackle this responsibility jointly. So the revenue manager becomes just a, 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 still this sort of chief strategy and analytical person providing the insight, but it doesn't get very far if it's not uh, a collective. <coughs> so, Jeanette, that's a, that's a great comment in saying re it's no longer revenue management and it probably is a misnomer. Are you at Fairmont trying to change what that, what that person's called and what that role really is and trying to make it a little bit more easy for people to understand that it's not just a, for me, it's not just about, it's not about numbers really, it's more logic and common sense and how you run your business smartly, but are you guys trying to change that to calling it more a profit management or profit optimization? And we haven't got to the point of changing the titles yet. I think that will come because it's just that the industry understands it, right? So just as the industry understands what a director of revenue management uh, manager does, we don't want to suddenly say, okay, now you're our director of profit optimization and then everybody sort of brings you back to finance mm -hmm. and all sorts of areas like that. I think that's probably a couple of years away for us. But we have started to call our strategy Total Hotel Profit Optimization. So we say we're moving towards this strategy. And so we bring in elements like the importance of recognizing distribution uh, costs, recognizing overall sales and marketing costs, uh, trying to benchmark it. So something that's coming out in the industry is actually if you, know, if you look at SDR, uh, SDR is to help you benchmark your re room's revenue performance uh, across the industry. But uh, I know that the industry, uh, led by Cindy Estes Green, actually the lady whom you saw in the congratulatory note earlier, she's trying to build a SDR-like product, but in terms of understanding how we're performing in overall sales and marketing uh, effectiveness. So that I think also is sooner or later going to build back into how we think about revenue management or mm -hmm. profit optimization. Jürgen, I know you guys have also gone down the path of trying to integrate revenue management into F&B and function space practices. Now, can you kind of give us an example of how you managed to try and get people on the F&B side, for example, to understand what you're trying to do and achieve? And how did that, how did that integration work? Um, I have to say that we're, we're very much at the beginning stage of that. Uh, the, especially at the beginning, and, and, and guys jump in, because you, I think you might be a little bit further ahead than, than we are on this one, but there's a lot of education, again, that needs to go in. You need to get the right people in there, number one, but you also need to get the people to start to understand basic principles of revenue management again. Uh, if I look at one of our, our key hotels, which is not far from here, um, <laughs> <laughs> Singapore is very small, right? Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, the... the the, the way some of the structures are still set up at the hotel also needs to be changed, so that's one of the things we need to look at. Do you have a sales and catering department or a catering sales department that doesn't really fall under sales but is completely separate, for example? It's one of those things that we have to go through. Um, I, I can't say we've implemented it 
to a great extent, and uh, you're asking for an example of how did it go very well, but we still have a lot of these smaller hurdles, to be honest with you, to go to get past. But I think, I think you guys might have gone a little bit further than that already. Um, yeah, so one of the things which has thrown me, I've been in Asia since about, well, about 10 years now, and one of the things which has thrown me is the fact that we talk about revenue management, but, but from my experience, most revenue managers focus on rooms most of the time, if not all of the time. And, you know, and in Asia, probably 45% is non-rooms revenue, maybe 50% in, 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 uh, in some parts. So we've always, well, most hotels have ignored revenue management around those streams. So one of the things we started, uh, well, two years ago, um, was taking revenue management or taking rooms revenue management out of hotels. So for about 42 hotels of ours that are across Asia Pacific, we no longer have a rooms revenue manager in a hotel. Um, their rooms revenue management is performed from an office in Shanghai, which then allows us to have the revenue manager which still sits in the hotel focusing on the non-rooms revenue stream, so focusing on C&E, F&B, or uh, internet telephony, or other, or spa, for example. Um, picking up on what Jürgen says is, we still got a long way to go before we optimize and you know, completely do the right thing around rooms, and we know that. Um, I think we still got, we're probably only 20 to 30 percent of where we could be if we had limitless funds available to us. But if we're only 20, 30 percent of where we could be in rooms, we are one hundredth of one percent where we could be in F and B. I mean, F and the, the ability for most hotels to perform revenue management around non-rooms revenue streams is shockingly poor. We just don't have the data. Uh, and whilst it's uh, not, you know, most people don't like it. In order to perform revenue management well, you need a lot of data. Uh, and we, we, we're struggling in F&B. Um, so that's going to be the first, the first start, is putting into place some basic practices to start collecting data in an organized uh, rhythm. Ben, we've talked about um, this whole concept of total hotel revenue management or performance for years and years and years now. I think every, every day, every year, we hear people talk about it. Still, and you're saying it still hasn't taken off. And you, you talked about data collection, but why? What are the hurdles? Why is it not taking off that every year, again and again, we talk about we should do this, but we aren't really doing it? I, in my, well, I, I think there's a number of different factors at play here. I think if you are a small individual hotel or maybe part of a small chain, you actually have a massive advantage. You can put into place practices which would allow you to start doing total customer revenue management, for the, i.e. the total piece. There, there comes a point in time when you become so big as a hotel company that actually trying to back, go back and fit, knit everything together becomes actually quite complex. Um, and you know, if you look at Hilton, which you know, theoretically is one company, there are, because it's been grown over such a long period of time, you've got multiple different systems at play. You know, I don't know, we, we are, we're still not at a point yet for example, if you look at PMS, the property management system, you know, the system that front office use to check people in and check people out. We, we, we have two systems around the world, i.e. some hotels are on, or most of our hotels are on what we call on queue, our proprietary system, but there is a number of hotels which are on, you know, opera. If you look at outside of uh, rooms and you look at food and beverage or even just look at catering and events, we, you know, that, you've got some hotels which are on Micros for Dahlia, you've got some hotels which are on Opera, you've got some hotels which are on New Market Delphi, you've got some hotels which have nothing, paper diaries still. Um, and that is part so, of the problem. So you're saying technology is one big roadblock um, yeah. and the implementation of it. Jeanette, I'm going to sort of go to you and say, have you guys found the same problem with not being able to implement the right technology fast enough. Is it an issue of it not being developed? Is it an issue of the IT folks not giving it enough importance? Or is it, people, is it, is it just people don't know how to use it? I think we're sort of on the cups of a really exciting time for revenue management <coughs> where we can really make headway into this so-called dream of total hotel profit optimization, right? So in the technology sphere, I mean, I agree with everything that Ben has said. 
there were two very recent developments that you know is going to be a big help. One is of course just the the whole industry as a whole and our understanding of analytics and what to do with data. So we know we have a lot of data there. And then the other one is the movement of so many of our systems into the cloud. So once you're able to do that, it means that information is no longer locked down sort of property by property through so many different, very fragmented systems, but it is available sort of in a center place where you could do a lot more with it. So in terms of like restaurant revenue management, we embarked on it last year and we found this technology, this, this sort of analytics company that helps us to take all of our data, do a whole level of screening in order to enable us to actually do restaurant revenue management. Because what Ben said was absolutely true. If you don't have that clean data, uh, there's absolutely nothing you can do to start the whole program. So the companies are there. Um, I think in terms of maybe out of China and out of America, still primarily these two countries are the ones that are generating all these capabilities in terms of analytics. And the other thing is, of course, the, the, the world of um, analytics is now progressing so fast that when you have a business idea, so for example, the concept of function space revenue management, for rooms, it took the industry years and years and years to even build the very first rooms revenue management system, I don't know, 15 or 20 years back. And it's taken us so long to even get it to progress to the way it is now. And it's still very much rooms focused. The, the systems that are going into total revenue is just about emerging, I think, in the last uh, uh, year or so. Uh, so in the area of uh, all of these analytics now, it's so fast, so like function space, with the concept being available so-called and discussed industry-wide about two, three years back, I think next year already you start to see some of these companies coming up with function space uh, capabilities. So I think the speed of technology development. So now the, sorry, the, the main thing is, as an industry, do we know the right question to ask? I think the technology kind of is there and it gets cheaper and cheaper. I mean, so if I asked you, the audience, if I said to you, how, what was your occupancy last month in your hotel, your room occupancy last month in your hotel? I'm going to guess most of you could answer that question. I'm really hoping most of you would be able to know. You know what your room occupancy is, 80 or 78, whatever it is. You know that. If I then said to you, right, what was your meeting room occupancy last month? How many of you honestly could put your hand on your heart and say, I know what my meeting room occupancy last month was? None. And that, that is a truism. I mean, if we want to define what occupancy is for a bedroom, we can, we can rattle that off immediately. We know exactly what the definition of occupancy for a bedroom is. It's easy. If you say, what is, what's the definition of occupancy for a meeting room, then it immediately, that one simple KPI becomes complex. Because if you sell this room for once, does that mean it's occupied? Or if you sell it for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, does that mean it's 300%? It's, it's just off the charts complex. Um, and until we start breaking those down and actually start, I mean, to Jeanette's point, one, we need data, two, technology, three, we need focus. And actually a lot of hotel companies have veered away from trying to tackle this because one, it's so complex and two, we don't have that level of money. But Ben, do we have enough resources, human resources, to be able to do all of that stuff, right? Because you, you said earlier, they, we're just not been able to get ourselves away from the rooms. We're, we're, we're far from realizing the full potential of rooms revenue management. So if your revenue manager is so focused on rooms and can't get him or herself away from just doing that, do we have enough people in the property that can fly the flag for no. what we call total hotel revenue management? M I mean, on Maybe average, I should ask the sales guys that question yeah. rather than the revenue On folks. average, how many hotels, <clears throat> I mean, how many salespeople are there in a hotel? And then you look at that and say, well, how on average, how many revenue people are there in a hotel? Most hotels have maybe one <coughs> revenue manager. And you know, if you're lucky, you might have two. Um, uh, there, there's something's not quite right there. Now, I'm not advocating we should go out and employ an army of revenue managers, but I think we need to look at it. I mean, what, what our approach was to take rooms revenue management away from hotels, move it somewhere else, so then that allows more focus. Um, but it's a problem. So again, is it, I go back to the question we asked earlier, you have your hotel GMs that need to be convinced that you need more than one, two, or three, or four people doing this stuff. Because if you want to expand it out to multiple disciplines and have all of those operational 
departments or business units buy into that concept. I'm guessing you need more people, so it's not just data or the technology, it's getting more people on board as well. I, yeah, I would agree, uh, but I would, also, I, I would also say, and this comes back to my earlier point, is as a function or a discipline, I don't believe revenue management as a whole has been good enough on explaining the value we add and really articulating the power, the value that we add to non-revenue people. We are not very good as a function at tying activity to performance. We aren't very good at you know, explaining to non-revenue people, you know, if you add one more person to your business, this is a value they could create for you. And that is essentially why we are in a lot of hotels, one person for a $200 million property. I'm guessing so that's where you need a, need a salesperson together with the revenue folks, right? Because they can explain things much better than a revenue guy can. So pra practically for us, how we know that every hotel, I mean, if you talk about <coughs> adding a hate count, if you say, I would, like, I, I would now like to have a food and beverage revenue manager to beef up my revenue management team. That conversation is gonna take five years and it will never get onto the budget. <laughs> so the way we could do it from last year when we started to sort of implement and roll out, now we have about a third of our hotels. And of course, for us, it's a benefit because we have only 100 hotels. So to Ben's point, it's kind of easier for us to do it with you know, a, a smaller group. So with these hotels, what we've done is just to say, anywhere within your food and beverage team, I just want someone who's very, very analytical to be the champion to work with the director of revenue management. So I think in maybe two years time when we've established this program, and as long as we have this role, so we don't call them revenue management, they are still in food and beverage, but they are the so-called an supporting analytics brain within the food and beverage. And that's kind of how we want to do it throughout. Um, it doesn't add additional hate count, but we think in about two to three years time, maybe that role could be a little bit more dedicated as the program goes. So, I guess these are just some practical ways to move about the, uh, to building okay. the that's, team. That's good advice, I guess. A good way to probably do it as opposed to going and asking for a revenue, F&B revenue manager. Um, moving on to, um, or let's go back to a question that was asked earlier. I think when Bob was presenting and Sihun was in the room asking a question about distribution channels. Now, obviously that again is, 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 is a huge part of what a revenue manager successfully does or doesn't do. Um, and with the advent or the pro proliferation of so many distribution channels, it's a tough task in managing all of them. We know that. Now, it's also, there is a hotel marketing team that's focused on e-commerce and trying to drive business with the website and the revenue manager's trying to do that as well. But you've got so many different channels that you're managing. If the cost of distribution is increasing that much and the ref power isn't, what are we trying to do to try and reduce the number of distribution channels we're managing? Or is it a fear that we have saying, if I cut back on some of the distribution channels, I'm going to lose demand? What's, what's your thought maybe? Um, Jürgen, you want to take mm -hmm. that? Well, I think that the first thing that is important is um, in, in our company, I'm, I'm sure in others as well, we've, we have these e-commerce managers in key areas. And the key, the, the e-commerce managers in general, they report to an area director of revenue. Like in Singapore, we have that. In Australia, we have that as well. So that already helps. So the person that is this, doing this e-commerce work has a revenue management analytical mm -hmm. kind of mindset. Um, part of their, wo their work, of course, is also to make sure that we're represented well in all the electronic channels. Um, that, that's, that's one thing. Um, second, I think what is important on, on this thing is that we need, we need to realize that it's not really the distribution channels per se that are driving the business, but it's the segments or the business that we're trying to get that comes through different distribution channels, and that's what we try and need to steer somehow. So if you, you say, oh, you know, open up the tap for this or open up the tap for that, it doesn't really work like that completely in my mind. If you want to get more GDS business, because that's a cheaper way of getting business than from um, an OTA or having a wholesale business, then, then you need to sign up companies on a negotiated rate or make sure you do your RFPs properly. Um, so it, it goes together, your segment mix and your distribution channel mix goes together and that's why in my mind the first important thing is to how do you reduce your distribution costs is to make sure that you've combined your e-commerce position together with the revenue management position. So it can't just be completely separate, either one would report to mm. maybe one to in, into the director of sales and marketing and the other one into the general manager, in my mind that doesn't work. So right. in my mind e-commerce or the distribution person needs to report into revenue management as well, they need to have that mindset. 
Ben, have you guys done the same at Hilton, or is it is it two separate departments? Um, so, I mean, e-commerce doesn't fall under marketing within Hilton. Uh, well, it, it, at some point it, it does, but then marketing reports into revenue management internationally in Hilton. So, uh, um, it's similar to what Jürgen, there was a conversation before lunch which really struck me and worried me when there was a conversation about that distribution costs are rising quicker than uh, rev bar growth. Uh, and, uh, if that is happening, you've got to look at your hotel's business model. Because that, that is illogical in my mind and, and would be very worrying. Now, on a percentage basis, that may be true, but that's because it's coming off a very, very low base. Um, but, you know, if you've got in anywhere in Asia Pacific, uh, in my mind, rev par growth growing less than uh, distribution costs, then you've got a problem in your strategy. Um, if you think about one of the fastest growing uh, channels right now anywhere, and especially in Asia Pacific, is mobile. Mobile will be, you know, on a total basis, one of the cheapest forms um, of, of distribution. Therefore, you know, we've, if that previous statement was true, distribution costs are growing faster than rev bar, then you need to look at your strategy. Um, if you're not managing your strategy and you are allowing customers who previously booked through your brand websites or through mobile or through hotel direct and you're allowing them to just move across to wholesale or to an OTA, then sure, you're going to have a problem. But your problem's bigger than distribution cost problem. Your problem is you're a commodity and you're probably not that far away from becoming a problem. Um, Somebody's going to get fired then, right? You, yeah, well, I would be. Some of the, yeah. Because <laughs> That, that, that has to be a problem. I mean, and we, we do see that. You know, I mean, one of the biggest examples for me in this part of the world is obviously C-Trip. You know, and what C-Trip are doing? C-Trip, if you rewind a few years ago, were an OTA, and that's how they were viewed. C-Trip are now much more than an OTA. They are almost an ecosystem in their own right, and they are going to become much bigger than just a website. Or you know, they're buying into wholesale. They're doing the whole total piece. Uh, we need to, as hotels and, a travel, as a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and hotel companies, we need to have a strategy of how do you work with C-Trip. Because if, in my opinion, if your strategy to work with C-Trip is the same as your strategy to work with an Expedia or a Booking.com based on a Western experience, then you could be in trouble. You talked about mobile, Ben, and I'm going to go to Jeanette on the mobile Piece. What is the role of the revenue manager as far as mobile is concerned? Because people are viewing mobile as, you know, you've got to treat it as another, you've got another, another channel, or another distribution channel, or is it really a new market segment because it's a different kind of people that are booking through mobile? How do you view this and what is the role of revenue management and, and even your marketing team as far as managing this particular beast? For us, I mean, mobile, I look at it both ways. One is, it is just a channel, but for revenue management, you just have to understand who are the individuals who prefer to book you on mobile, and therefore you know what sort of offers to put on board. So presumably mobile has a much shorter lead time, so it appeals to a different type of booking, so it, it appeals more to uh, simpler booking like a business booking. I'm going to come in for one night and location is prime as long as it's within my per diem and it's especially a brand that I trust, it's a very quick, easy decision. But if you're making a, a family vacation and it's the first time the family gets together over uh, a long weekend and, and things like that and you're coming in from all different areas and you want a suite and you want connecting rooms and all that, that is probably not the audience that's booking through the mobile. So I think for, in terms of revenue management's role in mobile is to understand still who is the consumer in the market segment that's using this and then make sure you have the right offer and therefore the right price for it. Now the big opportunity that I see in mobile is that mobile really allows revenue management to to sort of reach the end stage where you could do a one-on-one -on -one offer. Whatever it is now, we're still doing pricing and product offering and product bundling, still pretty much in mass market segments, however we understand market segments now, right? The business traveler or the wholesale or the tour or whatever. And I think mobile combined with uh, customer insights, combined with the fact that we know a lot more about our customers now, allows us to really get to that uh, 
engagement and that communication one-to-one. -one. So over time, we should be getting more and more intelligent in the way we uh, price and provide experiences and product offerings which is unique to a particular customer. So I think that's the big opportunity. So is it, is it fair to say then the lines between, let's call it e-commerce, marketing, revenue management, are completely blurred? Or they don't even exist anymore? And it's almost like it's one or a bunch of people as one entity that are, that are just trying to drive the best, most profitable business through the best and most profitable channel or segment. Yeah, I mean, I think the days of, you know, go back to 10, go back even five years, that you know, hotel companies had rigid market segmentation. And to all intents and purposes, you could almost forget that nowadays. Um, which causes its own challenge from a, from a you know, revenue management or an optimization perspective, which is where systems are so driven by aggregation at market segment level. But, you know, corporate books through wholesale. Wholesale books through OTAs, if, you're naked, if your rates are going out and they're naked. You know, are they going, uh, corporates are booking on mobile. They're, they're, you know, the days of linear customers, uh, 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 those days have gone. Um, and... Uh, similar to what we were talking about before lunch with Bob, you know, we are going through a time where the world is changing and we either adapt or suffer. It's a, it's, it's a very scary thought when you put it like that, right? The days of linear, looking at consumers in a linear fashion or in silos or whatever is gone. You, there's no longer a segment or there's no longer a, a channel specific. And that's a scary thought because, I mean, it, it, it's just going to keep getting more and more complex. And in that scenario, how do we structure ourselves smartly so that you're able to start taking advantage of that? Because that, that change is coming on faster than we are internally being able to change our structures. We're still stuck to you are X department and you are Y department. So, I mean, the question really is, if, if any of you have sort of, address that and been able to start seeing some success, uh, would love to hear um, from you. Well, if, if you look at the, the, mo the mobile, um, or access on mobile in general, it's going to actually speed that up a lot, lot faster because where you're going to go with mobile is all about the segmentation of one. It's going to be about that customer and how do I address with that one customer who's using his mobile to look for something that we offer or that probably a lot of people offer, but that we want them to book with us. So you need to make sure that in, in your organization or in your setup, you don't only have that website, mobile app, or whatever it is. You have your CRM set up, you've got your customer relationship management, you've got your, um, your loyalty program linked into it. Um, it, it, all goes, it all goes together in my mind. You can't just see it separately anymore. The mobile side really will speed that up, and I think it will speed it up faster than we understand or even think today. Um, and, and for example, in, in our company, we've only recently launched our mobile site when we've launched a new website, which was about three months ago. It has thrown up a lot of questions. We have all this data, but we can't do anything with it because we don't have a CRM yet, and we don't have proper business intelligence. So we, yes, we're, we're seeing a mobile site, but we can't optimize on the mobile site because we haven't set up all the rest of the bits and pieces that need to go behind it. So that's one of the bigger learnings as well. So when you do launch a mobile site, if you have a mobile site or you're thinking about a mobile strategy, you have to think about the whole bit not just a site. I, I, this is certainly not the answer to the question, but I would, uh, certainly not the answer to the problem, but I would say the one thing this does spell out is I am convinced that you need a, a hotel company needs to have all commercial elements, sales, marketing, e-commerce, revenue management, PR, under one hood, with coming into one person. So, you, and this is what we were coming back to earlier, you need to have common strategies, common metrics, because if you do not have that and you have divergence, we will fail because you will go after different things. What about IT? You said you bring all of these disciplines into one, under one hood and you talked about technology being a big roadblock. Would you put some IT resource in there and it kind of goes off and starts developing the right kind of technology just to suit those purposes, or you wouldn't do that? Uh, we, I mean, Hilton's flip-flopped on this. We've had IT under commercial, and we've had IT outside of commercial over the last type of four years or so. Um, I, 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 
We don't, have, we don't have a problem believing we need to spend more on IT. We have a problem convincing owners we need to spend more on IT. Um, you know, owners, in my, in my opinion, are, are quite keen to spend IT on things which are very visible. You know, nobody questions door locks or a PMS. But if you then talk about something behind the scenes, yeah. that becomes a tougher, tougher argument. We need to do a better job of explaining. The be I mean, again, it's about explaining benefits and return on investment. Um, you know, we still have some hotels which have more than 100 bedrooms which have no automated CNE management system. It's still a paper diary, which in 2014 seems to me slightly strange. Maybe they can move straight to mobile. <laughs> Jeanette, you had a comment. Yeah, no, so to Ben's point, I think the, the, this one about where we used to do all of these functions sort of in silo, really I think everybody recognizes the need to integrate it. So this whole concept of integrating marketing that starts from, you know, have you got the right analysis, the insights which, you know, revenue management or analytics would provide? Do you know the customer behind it? And then it goes into the digital marketing uh, area and it goes also into PR and partnership and traditional platforms and all that. So one of the big things that uh, for our company which we've recognized and we've reorganized is, for example, under Carmen, her entire or half a team is sitting here, but you've got Nehar who is looking at marketing and pulling together the whole integrated marketing uh, view and strategy, which would then include Caroline's digital marketing area, which covers from the, you know, what do we do with any OTAs, if at all? Uh, what do we do in our own B2C uh, brand.com? and any other type of digital sphere, mobile and all that. And we have uh, partnerships covered. We have our own loyalty programs, which I think is, is absolutely huge and necessary. And then we have the revenue management team that talks about, you know, is it the right thing to, to put in place and the analytics team. So I think we are really pulling all of these capabilities together under uh, integrated marketing, if you call it. And so they all have a role to play in it. Okay. Excellent. Um, at this point, uh, anyone would like to ask them any questions before we let them get off stage? Feel free, whatever you want to ask. I mean, it doesn't have to be revenue management related either. Hey, John, sorry, just grab the mic if you don't mind. Thank you. Hi, um, when looking at a mobile strategy, do you also see tablets as part of that strategy combined or different? Yeah, we, we recently moved tablet to mobile. Um, so we, can, we, we, we say mobile is tablet plus phone. It didn't used, didn't used to be. Right. But we've just made that change this year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? None whatsoever? You've got it all perfect in the organization, all, all good. No problems whatsoever. Okay. Um, folks, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts. I think they've been quite insightful. Um, we managed to cover a lot of stuff, so hopefully we get um, to see a little better integration going forward and have solutions for total customer revenue management or total hotel revenue management when we meet the next time. So thank you very much. <laughs>